let's talk about graphite pencils. I think they are a really lovely beginner friendly material. And if you follow a few key methods are extremely forgiving. So let's go through the key materials you need to draw with them and the techniques that I always use. Now, first off, the main thing you'll need is obviously some graphite pencils. Note that you will need more than one. So graphite pencils come in a range of hardnesses. Harder pencils, when they go down on the paper, tend to look lighter. Softer pencils look darker. And I always like drawing with three. A harder, a medium, and a softer pencil. So generally speaking, I would select an HB pencil, a 3B, and a 6B. That said, when I buy graphite pencils, I tend to buy them in a set and they have a good range. Range. The next thing you'll need is paper, but you'll need the right kind of paper. A lot of people I see trying to draw on sketch paper, but it's not going to be possible to build up the graphite enough on a paper like these. The absolute key to drawing with graphite is contrast. If you can get your lights really nice and light and your darks really nice and dark, it's always going to look amazing and it's not going to be possible to do that on these types of papers. I like to draw on something called Bristol board paper. This is a nice and smooth paper. It's really easy to control the graphite on it and it can take all of the layers that you'll need to build up. Next up you'll need a pencil sharpener and this doesn't need to be anything fancy. As long as you can get a nice sharp point with the pencil that's all you need. From there you'll also need some erasers. First up you'll need a putty eraser. This is a moldable eraser. You can mold it into different shapes. I also always use an electric eraser. This is a powered eraser. You press the button, the end of it spins. You can add some really fine details with this eraser. And I'll show you a bit later on in this video how I actually use these. The last thing you'll need is some way of looking at a reference photo. So because I focus on drawing realistically, the best way I find to do this is with a reference. I find it's not easy to get all of the sort of randomness of nature without a reference. Now I like to look at reference photos on my eye iPad, particularly because I can zoom in if I want to see any finer details. That said, you could just use a printed out photo. So those are all the materials you'll need to draw with graphite. Let's think about the process of how to draw. Now, before we get started, if you want to learn about graphite in a lot more detail, I do have a full Skillshare course. This covers absolutely everything you need to know to start drawing with graphite. And I really thoroughly cover everything that I'm going through in this video. I've included in the video description a free 30 day Skillshare trial. So do check that out. There'll be more than enough time to complete the course. So now whatever I'm drawing with graphite pencils, I always go through the same process. So I'll show you the process by drawing this orange. But once you know the steps, you can do it with any picture. So the first thing that I always do is find a reference photo. As I mentioned, I think they are the key to creating realistic drawings. But you want to make sure that you get the right one. When drawing with graphite pencils, you need to have really good contrast. So that is the number one thing I'm looking for in a reference photo. I want something that has really dark darks, really light lights and really good midtones. So an orange like this rather than an orange like this, which just looks kind of a bit washed out. Once I've selected the right reference photo, what I then want to do is create a sketch. I want to make sure that everything is going to be in proportion. So the main way that I do this is by using a method called the grid method. This is where you draw a grid on your drawing paper and a grid on your reference photo and then you only draw what's in each individual square. If it's a really complicated drawing then you can draw a smaller grid. If it's really simple you can add bigger squares. Once you've drawn the shapes in each square you can then erase the grid and you have your sketch. The key here is you want it to be really nice and light. You don't want any harsh lines to be showing through at the end. From here what I like to do is start with my hardest pencil. So for me that would be the HB pencil. And I just want to block in the key shapes. I don't need to worry about any kind of detail because all of that will be added in later on. Now the main thing that you want to be doing here is pressing lightly. So I've briefly talked about layers. What we want to be able to do is build up the graphite. So with this first pencil, in order to lightly build in these key shapes, there's a few things that I can do. First up, I hold the pencil further back than you might expect. I tend to hold 
hold it about halfway down the pencil. What this does is literally stops me from being able to press too hard. If I held it near the tip, I'd have to have a lot more pencil control. Next up, I need to have a really nice and sharp pencil. If I have a blunt pencil, it just doesn't go down in as consistent a way. It tends to look a little kind of clumpy. And also because I am here just marking out the key shapes, I want to be working as smoothly as possible. As I said, I'm not worrying about any of the details right now. So I want to be working in circular motions. So rather than scribbling back and forth with the pencil, which is gonna make some pretty harsh lines, if I work in circles, it puts down the pencil in a much smoother way. It allows the pencil to gradually build up. And that is essentially how I create this first layer. Once I've mapped everything out nice and lightly, I then want to blend it. And I don't use any fancy materials here, just a piece of tissue. I like to wrap it around my finger and then work in circular motions again to smoothly blend all of this together. Essentially what I'm doing is smudging it. You can see that if I had have added in any detail, it would have all been lost now. It would have been just a waste of time. So once I've blended this, what I then do is exactly the same, but with the medium pencil, the 3B pencil. Once again, marking out those key shapes, maybe with a few extra details, maybe with a few other sort of key, more detailed shapes, but not a huge amount. Certainly not any fine details. I once again want to be pressing lightly, I want to be working with a sharp pencil, working in those circular motions. And you can see it's making the drawing just look a little bit richer. Once I'm happy with this next layer, I once again want to blend it with once again the same tissue. From here I can move on to my darkest pencil and I'm really focusing now on those darkest areas. I'm still not worrying about any of the details here. I just want to be getting those darkest areas as dark as I can see on the reference photo. But I can build up this pencil by going over an area a number of times. I still don't want to be pressing hard. Once I'm happy with this third layer, I can once again give it a final blend, still using those circular motions to blend it so it looks nice and smooth. From here, I have a drawing of an orange that looks pretty smudgy, but this is where the erasers come in. So I can use my putty eraser to firstly tidy up around the edges. I can once again give the orange some really nice crisp outlines. I can also mold the eraser into kind of a flat shape and use this to dab on the picture to just lift some graphite. If there's an area that I want to be just a little bit lighter, that's the other way that I use the putty eraser. Now for the electric eraser, this is where I add in all of the details. So in this particular drawing, the details are all of the sort of spotty texture on the orange. So I can dab the electric eraser on the paper and it lifts some really small patches of the graphite right back to the original color of the paper. And I can go over all of the light areas, adding that light back in with a mixture of these two erasers. This is one of the reasons why it was so important to press lightly so that we would be able to remove the graphite again. Once I'm happy that I've got all of those light areas in, I can then go back to the softest pencil, the 6B pencil, and add in all of the final details. So now we've got a really rich background to be building. It's just the final details, like the little dots on the skin, sort of surrounding those lighter spots that are really gonna help make this orange pop. Now that is essentially what I do for every graphite drawing. Whether I'm drawing a person, an animal, animal or a flower is always the same process. Now don't forget, if you would like to see this in a lot more detail, it is in my Skillshare course with the free trial in the description. Now, if you'd like to learn more about drawing with graphite pencils, specifically drawing animals, have a look at this video here. This is where I cover all of the common mistakes that I see people making. And I do think it will really help to level up your pet portrait skills. Happy drawing guys, and I'll see you in the next one.